Today we're going to be talking about the 105mm f2.5 Nikkor lens on the Z6. First of all, this lens is full manual, okay? So putting it on the Z6 doesn't gain you any automatic functionality at all. So at the end of the day, the F to Z adapter from Nikon adds bulk and makes it a little more difficult to operate because you can't easily, if you have it tripod mounted, you can't get this on and off real easy. So I have bought a Photosy brand Nikon uh, F mount to Nikon Z mount adapter because it's nice and cylindrical. It's a much smoother profile for these pure manual lenses. You know, if you have the AF series lenses, then the camera still has aperture control over those lenses and it also has EXIF data collection. But on these lenses, it doesn't do any of that. So you really don't need that extra mass and all that electronics that the camera's talking to for nothing. So that's why I like this simple adapter for these old manual lenses. The lens itself is f2.5 maximum aperture. And if you notice, it goes from f2.5, it has a detent slightly past it which is f2.8 actually. And then it goes to f4, to 5.6, 8, 11, 16, and 22 in whole stop increments. It focuses from eh, somewhere a little under one meter. Yeah, a little under around three feet to infinity, of course. The focus ring is nice and smooth on my particular copy. It, your mileage may vary on this because these lenses get old and the grease gets stiff in them. So you'll see problems with that from time to time. The lens does have um, hyperfocal distance or, or zone focus markers. The F8, the F16, and the F22 aperture values are color coded and there's little bands on this ring to show you what all would be in focus should you choose those values. So if I put F8 down, it being a 105, it's pretty tight. You know, you get down to like, 35 and 28 millimeter and it's super wide and you can just zone focus and you don't even have to hit the focus lever but with a 105 you once you get out pretty good distance you get some room to breathe you know from 30 feet to about 60 feet is in focus but if you go to 15 feet you're 15 to 20 probably and then if you go on the other side of 15 it's 15 down to about 13. that aside it is marked the lens itself is about two, two and a quarter inches in diameter. It's about three inches long. It's got, I've got a Nikon pinch front cap. The front caps are irrelevant. You, you get whatever kind you want. Now here's something that's nice about the front of this lens is they have built in lens hoods, okay? Back in the day, Nikon used to put lens hoods on the lens and it's a nice felted ID lens hood so it's got non-reflective inner surface so you don't get glare off your lens hood and it's really well made on this one especially it's almost like it's I'm pretty sure they're detent ball detents but it feels like magnets I mean it clicks pronouncedly listen and there's at least two of them so that's a nice little perk that comes with the older glass plus this glass is super cheap the focus barrel smooth like I said and it's wide it's got plenty of traction area so it's easy to drive this makes a really, really good portrait lens. Today, I'm gonna to try to shoot it on the Z6. If you go into your non-CPU lens data and enter values for the lens, it somehow activates IBIS, so now the lens will be stabilized. So I'm gonna to try to shoot street photography with it today and see if I can get some street photos. Just like that, we're in downtown Chattanooga. Okay, the plan today is, is to shoot some street photography with the 105 f2.5 on the Z6 which is a little long, I know, but it should work okay if I if I work it right. If I'm shooting across the street, it should work really well. On this side of the street, I'll probably have to try and do portraiture, but it should work pretty well. As soon as I take that off, I'm going to walk around for a couple of hours. I've got I got a couple of hours on my meter here, so I'm not going to take the video camera. I don't have I'm trying to make a attachment to put it on my belt so I can just like let it hang on the back of my belt out of the way. But for right now, I wind up trying to carry it in my arm and all this sort of jazz, and it just really interferes with my walkabout. So I'm going to leave the camera in the truck, and then I'll get back with you when I get done with my walk, and we'll see what the photos look like.
Whew, that was a long walk. I walked all the way home. You don't believe that, do you? I didn't think you did. <laughs> the pictures coming out of this lens are astronomical. They're just beautiful. This old lens coupled with the Z6 is really a force to be reckoned with. I shot most of the photos at F8, but I did stop it down to F2.5 and shoot a few so that you could get an idea like the one of the sign to give you the idea of the background blur so that you can see that it makes for a beautiful portrait lens. If you're in the market for a economical portrait lens and you don't mind manual focus because the focus assist on the Z6 is incredible. It's, I think it's, it may be even a variable power and you can adjust it, but I think I've got it set to 10X magnification. So you zoom in, you can dial in the focus really crisp on, on the spot that the focus indicator is pointing at. It'll zoom in on that spot. And then, wow, that got bright all at once. And then you can get very fine focus detail and still get a very accurately composed shot. And it's pretty quick, it really is. And if you're shooting portraits, like especially studio portraits, you don't need a bunch of hot rod autofocus. This lens would produce stunning studio photos. So with that, if you, if you have had any doubts if the 105 f2.5 AIS would work on a mirrorless Nikon camera like the Z6 or Z7 or maybe even the new Z5 or even the Z50, fear not because it's gonna work beautifully. If you haven't done it yet, subscribe right over there and so is the like button if you like the video. So until next time, get your camera out and go take a picture with it, all right? We'll see you later. Bye-bye.